taking your driving lessons about to start your driving lessons or you just want some ideas of what to expect in a driving lesson well watch this video we're going to teach you today about dual carriageways and motorways hey guys welcome to fm driving school online driving lessons if you're new to this channel subscribe we give you the best tips the best skills the best tools needed for you to pass your driving test and also we show you how to avoid failing your test so here we are we're on a dual carriageway um let me just get this out we're gonna go through the explanation of what a dual carriageway is in a moment let me just show you a mistake that's gonna that could potentially happen or is gonna happen we're doing about 40 miles an hour in gear 4 potentially gear 5 and look it's going slightly uphill we can't really see too far ahead but as soon as we get over this over this bridge watch what happens look there's a bus pulling out let me just pause it here the reason why I paused it is to show you how quickly I saw the bus pulling out, how far ahead I saw it. And if you're doing your hazard perception or you're learning to drive, that's how sharp and how alert you need to be, how far ahead you should be looking. In this situation, the first action should be interior mirror, right mirror, and possibly braking a little bit depending on how fast we're going, how close we are to the car in front of us, which we're going to show you. You can see the bus is pulling out and slowing down the cars in front of us. It's going to slow everybody down. Look, the car in front is going to start. There you go, red lights, start braking. We're going to check our mirrors indicate and move across. But we didn't really slow down our speed for the car in front. Um, ideally, we should have either slowed down or we should have moved across maybe a little bit earlier. We did get a bit too close to him. But as, a, as an examiner, um, I would let him off. I won't give him a fault just purely because he moved across safely. And now you're in the middle of the dual carriageway. Watch what happens. You have to check your left mirror and move back in. Very important. Once you've overtaken, watch out for the car on the left here. Once you've overtaken, you move back into the left lane. Do not hog the middle or there you go. That's the reason why. Do not hog the middle or right lane so that people can overtake. And we've already explained that to you in the previous videos. Let me explain to you what a dual carriageway is. It's a road with a dividing strip between the traffic in opposite directions and usually has two or more lanes in each direction. So you have this uh, middle lane here, or this uh, central, it's called a central reservation. This divides the two opposite traffic. So this is known as a dual carriageway. I would say one of the most important questions for us is hmm. to ask what is the speed on a dual carriageway. So in the theory, if you're doing your theory right now, you'll know the maximum speed limit is 70 miles an hour. Maximum. But th that doesn't mean, look, if you look at this road, there was a speed sign of 40. I'll show that to you in a bit. That doesn't mean every single speed carriageway is going to be 70 miles an hour. Some are 40, some are 50, some are 60, etc. And when you're doing your test, you have to look out for the speed signs. It's always good to practice in the areas that you're doing your test in so that you have an idea of what the average speed on a, not average speed, sorry, the speed on the dual carriageway is in your location. Send a message like location, location, I'm gonna come. Whatever you want, doesn't matter. Ireland, New York, Brooklyn, or Moscow, doesn't matter. Let me ask you this. Who has the next question? If you're taking driving lessons, have you been taken on the dual carriageway? And if so, how many lessons did you have before you were taken on the dual carriageway? It's an important question to ask yourself, um, simply because A, it determines what level you're at, and B, um, if your instructor is taking you for a ride, if he's, if he's delaying your progress. There's two types of drivers, someone with a lot of experience, so if they've had driving lessons before or they've driven abroad, or brand new driver. So an uh, experienced driver can be taken on the dual carriageway straight away, but a brand new driver depends on your level now, it depends if you have control of the car, whether you can listen to your instructor. So in my experience, um, within the first five lessons, even ten lessons, you should be taken on the dual carriageway. My quickest learner, I've taken them on the second lesson. I mean, I remember it quite vividly because it was a proud moment. We pushed her. We felt that she was confident. She had control of the car and she was listening really well. So, but obviously, every instructor teaches slightly differently. Let's just talk about this situation in front of us. you got a car braking on a dual carriage. We're on the left side. So make sure you brake. Our, our driver here is fairly close to the car in front. There should be a slightly bigger gap. In this situation, I'd give a, uh, I'd give a minor fault. Now the driver isn't reacting to the situation in front of him. He's not braking, he's not overtaking, he's, like the car in front is braking but he's not doing anything, he's continuing at the same speed. Now, the longer this car is on, look, there's traffic lights up ahead, and look, the lights are changing, and now he has to react, and it's quite sudden, look, it's come to sudden stop. Now this could go one of two ways. The lights could have saved him from getting a major fault. 
the longer you stay behind a car and too close to him it becomes a major fault personally i think it needed to be a little bit more longer for it to um, cater a major fault or the examiner gives him a major fault for suddenly stopping and not planning and maybe there was cars behind that that were affected because of his driving so we're giving you two thought processes that are going through the examiner's mind um, so you can get two major faults either by being too close to the car or by suddenly braking. How could you have avo avoided all that by planning ahead by noticing okay you're getting a bit too close to the car in front let me start braking. I remember when I was 17 years old and I did my driving test I failed for the exact same reason and I can understand what you guys are going through. Maybe you're thinking okay I need to keep to the speed limit it's 40 here so I'm going to try to keep to the 40 to impress the examiner and that's exactly what I did as a, as a young kid and I remember even explaining that to the examiner and he said to me uh, but mate are you safe? This guy is enjoying his ice cream. But anyway, but mate, are you safe? Um, and I wasn't safe because I was too close to the car. Anyway, back to the uh, dual carriageway. So we're just going to drive off. In your driving lesson, um, you could argue actually the dual carriageway is a lot easier to drive on. Why is that? Because you're just driving in a straight road. This time around, we did react to the traffic lights and we broke smoothly coming to a nice stop. So as I was saying, driving on dual carriageway is just driving on a straight road. So technically, it is a bit easier. Obviously, as a learner, it's hard to control the speed in the car. First time driving on it, all this traffic around you. But compare that to the roads you're driving on where you're turning left, right, changing gears. A lot is happening. So um, it's good to take you on the dual carriageway just to experience your experience your speed and um, have control of the speed as well. So one more thing we're going to show you now is... Um, Check out this car, he just cut in, indicated after he moved in. Um, so you can see some drivers, they just do crazy things when you're driving. As I was saying, I'm just going to show you one more thing, which is a uh, motorways up ahead. So what are the differences between a motorway and a dual carriageway? Um, quite a few things, so let's just go through. One is it might have a hard shoulder. The signs are usually in blue, notated by the M signs, M1, M25, etc. You can't have pedestrians or cyclists going on top of it. You don't have CBT drivers driving on top of it. But anyway, here you go. You got some blue signs in front of us. Therefore, we know it's a blue, big blue sign. We know we got a motorway coming up. Now, in the past, it was illegal for learner drivers to drive in the motorway. Uh, but now, it is legal. So, it, you can, if you really want to do practice with your instructor, you can practice with them. But generally, you don't get motorways in the test routes, so therefore your instructor wouldn't practice with you unless you ask them to. Let's just get the car moving. So the main thing I want to show you is is a sign. So as a driver, forget just being a learner for a moment. Just generally as a driver, you have to notice the signs that lead you onto the motorway and the signs that don't. So we got uh, signs on the left here, road markings. Um, road sign sorry the first one goes to, towards the motorway we can see it's a blue sign the other two don't so we're going to move across now on the a road we're on the dual carriageway of the road so now on the left side is a slip road up towards the motorway in the exam you have to be able to spot that as well some routes do contain these and you have to avoid going onto the motorway as i said in the past going on to it it was it was a major fault but nowadays the examiner will probably just direct you back towards where the dual carriageway is so look we went past the uh, motorway um, slip road up ahead and there's also if there's a uh, road going towards the motorway there, there's, there should be a road coming off the motorway at the same time so we've got the road here on the left they're coming off we just hold on to the middle lane for a little bit and then we're going to move back into the left lane just to give people anybody coming down space that's the end of today's video hopefully that was helpful and beneficial um, I know it was quite boring driving in a straight road and maybe there's not much to talk about but we did show you how potentially you can get major force driving on a dual carriageway and um, we showed you the difference between a, a dual carriageway and a motorway so anyway check out our other videos guys if you liked it um, share it subscribe please and, and watch out for other videos coming up good luck in your driving take care bye bye